One November evening, Larry was bringing his last train to the station. Christian was happy to see him. Are you on your way to Denville, Larry? Yes, I am. Why? Because I'm going there too. I think something's up. Julie looked up at the sky. Where? Not up there, down here, chuckled Larry. But how can something be up when it's down? Larry didn't feel like explaining. Wow, he shouted. Look over there. Amber, Roger, Samson, Jessica, Sarah, Jocelyn, and Geraldine paraded past. Hello, everyone, whistled Geraldine cheerfully. Aren't we all a fine sight? You look very splendid indeed, admired Julie. Sorry we can't stop. Mr. Egan wants us all together at Denville. What is this about? asked Larry. Mr. Egan and Mr. McCormick have an announcement, answered his driver. Now come on. So they followed the other engines to Denville Station. When they got there, Mr. Egan and Mr. McCormick addressed everyone. We called you all here because we have a very important announcement. What is this announcement? asked Jess. You will all be working on Thanksgiving Day, Mr. McCormick answered. The engines all muttered and exchanged very confused looks. They never work Thanksgiving Day. Is there some kind of big job that requires our help? In a way, said Mr. Egan, it is. Mr. McCormick and I were approached by a local news station a couple of months ago about putting on an engine parade for Thanksgiving Day. And well, we agreed to it. All the engine's faces lit up. Hooray, hooray, they all whistled. And my engines, added Mr. McCormick, will have our own little parade from South Denville right here to the main station. Who will be leading, Jess asked. We gave it a lot of thought, began Mr. McCormick, between me, Mr. Egan, and Dave, and we decided Larry should lead the parade. Larry almost couldn't believe what he had just heard. Me, me lead the Thanksgiving Day Parade? Yes, said Mr. Egan. You will pull your coaches, Penny and Kennedy, along with my business car. Hooray for Larry, cheered the other engines. For the next few days, Larry worked hard, and all he could think about was leading the parade. Larry grew more and more excited. Too excited for his own good. It makes sense I would leave the parade, he boasted. Dave and Mr. Egan think I'm really useful. Chris and I got chased by some criminals once. We raced down the line and stopped inches from the bridge. I'll show you. Larry, I don't think that's such a good, began Julie, but it was too late. Just like this, he boasted. Luckily, no one had been hurt, but Larry's front was badly bent. Julie came over to pull Larry clear while Jess came to rescue his train. Geez, Larry, what happened to you? She asked. I just slipped, puffed Larry. He was showing off and wasn't paying attention, laughed Julie. Larry grumbled as the inspector inspected his front. He then walked over and said something to Mr. Egan, who only shook his head. He then walked over to Larry. Sir, will I still be able to lead the Thanksgiving parade? Larry, I'm sorry, but you won't be able to. The damage isn't severe. You will be repaired rather quickly, but not in time to lead the parade, I'm afraid. I've decided to have Taylor do it in your place. I understand, sir, sighed Larry. Mr. Egan then went to speak to Jocelyn. I need you to run Larry's branch line while he's in the works. Jocelyn was delighted. Larry often talked about his branch line, so she already kind of knew the routine. She even stopped to chat with Chris at Denville. Take care of Larry's coaches, he advised. He's sure to miss them while he's away. Jocelyn was very gentle with the coaches. Penny and Kennedy were impressed. 
she's so nice, they told each other. It really is a pleasure to be pulled by her. On the day before Thanksgiving, they are passing the works and looked over at a very sad looking Larry. He looks so sad, said Penny. I wish there was something we could do for him, added Kennedy. Me too, sighed Jocelyn. Me too. As they were approaching the big station, they ran into Roger. Hey Roger, we ballasted some of the track before the parade? Oh no, replied Roger. This is part of me and Amber's float for the parade. Oh, that's awesome, replied Jocelyn. Is your float gonna... She then stopped mid-sentence and was thinking, pulling a float for the parade, pulling a... That's it, that's what I'll do. About what? asked Roger, perplexed. No time to explain, called Jocelyn. I must go talk to Mr. Regan at once. And she bustled away without another word. The next morning at Harmon Works, the next morning at Harmon Works, Larry had woken up bright and early to make sure he would be able to see his friends go by. He then heard a whistle. They can't be starting this early, he thought to himself. And that doesn't even sound like Taylor's whistle. The whistle belongs to Jocelyn. Good morning, Larry, she puffed cheerfully. What are you doing here, asked Larry. To pick you up, she smiled. I talked to Mr. Regan and he said you could be my float for the show. Larry smiled happily. Wow, said Larry. I, I, I don't know what to say. Just say thank you and let's get going, she laughed. Thank you, Larry told her, and she went to go get coupled up. Good morning, everyone. I am Owen Saunders. And I'm Denise Dobbs. And we are here live at North Plainsville Station, waiting for the first ever Southern United Railroad Thanksgiving Day Parade. And we couldn't ask for a more gorgeous day. Right, Denise? That's right, Owen. Temperatures are due to get up to 60 degrees today, which is above average, but perfect for gray weather. As you can see, everyone is blindside waiting for the engines to come. Up by hear a whistle, must be parade time. Leading the parade is Taylor, pulling a combine, coach, and business car. And I have to say, Owen, they look very splendid. Owen, look, here comes Christian, pulling a baggage car along with two railway express cars. Following him is Kevin, pulling two passenger cars from the Southern United Railroad commuter fleet. And right behind him is Ian, pulling two flat cars of logs and a caboose. Fun fact, the logs were cut and brought here via the narrow gauge Denville and Western Railroad. And following behind him is Sarah, pulling three open passenger gondolas from the Southern United Railroad's excursion fleet. And look at all those lucky riders waving to us from the train. Following her is Amber and Roger, the two maintenance diesels for a very unique and interesting looking work train. Behind them is Andrew with the caboose hop. And there's Julie puffing by herself, right engine. Behind her is the newest addition to the fleet, Jocelyn, pulling Larry, the railroad's only mastodon. And as I'm understanding, Denise, Larry was the engine that was originally supposed to lead this parade? Uh, yes he was, Owen. He had a bit of an accident and was taken out of service for repairs. But he's here as a float, so at least he still gets to participate. At the end of the parade in Denville, a huge Thanksgiving celebration was held. Larry looked around at all his friends. 
He was very thankful to have them and was glad that he was spending Thanksgiving with them instead of being all alone at the works. 